Hello, so I'm Griff Rees. I'm the owner of Gwynny Griffith. Before we started, does anybody keep bees already? Oh, quite a few. I know Jeremy does. <coughs> so who am I? So I'm born in Command, and sure I've been there the best part of my life. I went to Gethley Isle College, I studied countryside management. I went on to Brustwith and did the same. And at the time, I didn't want to start keeping bees back at the young age. But it turns out the information I learned in college back then had become very useful for me. So when I finished university, I went to work as a countryside ranger. Now I'm part time because the bee business has taken over and I've dedicated a lot more time towards producing honey and building the business. But even though I'm a countryside ranger, everybody knows me as the bee man or the honey man. So a little bit about the business. We've done a lot of media work over the past few years. We've been on Fermio. We've done a video for Cowine, which is the, the organization today. We've been on S4C, BBC Wales, uh, food programs. Last year, this discovery, uh, we won the Princess Countryside Fund. Uh, Prince Charles gave us that uh, brand new Land Rover for a year to help with the business. The, the truck wasn't that good for beekeeping, but the publicity was really good. So a little bit of success we've had with the honey. We've won the Great Taste Awards for two years, 2017, 2018. We won two stars. I think we're the only Welsh honey company to win two stars for Welsh honey for, well, as far back as I know. We were the finalist in the Food Awards Wales uh, this year. We were the only honey producer at the whole event. So even though we didn't win anything, it was still, still good to be there. And this year we've been uh, shortlisted for the, the regional finalist in the Rural Business Award. So fingers crossed. So this is the type of place I sell my honey currently. So CK has been probably the biggest uh, outlet. They've got roughly 32 shops. I think we're in six of them. Wright's Food Emporium. Wright's have been with us right from the start. Uh, very fortunate that Wright's took us on uh, right at the early stage. Sometimes that's all you need when you grow in a company is to have one good shop, one good um, producer or wholesaler to take you on. And then other opportunities come off the back of that. We're in Nigel Williams. That's a pharmacy chain down in Carmarthenshire. We're in a local Nissan Dravach, local spa in Porthread. We're in several community shops. That one there is in Brechva. They can be great outlets, especially for someone just starting off. You don't want to go mainstream. Your local community shop will sell loads of honey because it's a big tourist attraction. A lot of holiday makers go there and everybody wants to buy something Welsh, take back home with them as a souvenir, but it's also a great gift. And different to a lot of other bee farmers, we do a lot of online sales. So we're on Amazon, we're on eBay, and we've got our own e-commerce store on our website. So we sell direct through the website. So why did I start keeping bees? I had a big interest in farming, but my parents, they weren't farmers. So the next best thing for me was to go into countryside management. And that's what I did, I became a ranger. But after graduation, I still had that farming bug. I still wanted to do something more than just work. I wanted to produce my own food and start my own business. So I looked, did a bit of research, and it turned out you don't need that much land to keep bees. So you don't need a massive farm. So all you need is a quite a big garden away from people. That's enough ground to start keeping bees. So I got a bit obsessed with it, started talking to everybody, telling everybody I'm going to start keeping bees. And it turns out a farming friend of mine had two hives in the, wood, in the woods and a previous beekeeper died 20 years ago and he, he told me, Griff, I'm pretty sure the bees are still there. Why don't you go down and have a look? So I was super keen. I went down into the woods and the, the bees are still there in this rotted hive. Cut the story short. We took the bees home, got stung, well, worse than stung. It was a... a horror film really bringing them back because I didn't know what I was doing and uh, I was a bit scared then I go through them you know I thought oh I've committed this beekeeper thing and again stung is not something that I wanted to do but it turns out later that week a fr uh, well I call him a friend he's a friend now Dorian the person from the village that I'd know I uh, didn't even know who the guy was turned up 
at my parents' house and said, does Griff live here? And they said, yeah, oh, I've heard he wants to keep, start keeping beers. And um, from there on, for the year then, I went and helped him. He taught me the ropes, and it's because of all of that that uh, Gwyn and Griff was born. And it just shows the importance of talking to people. If I didn't tell everybody I was going to start keeping beers, or I wanted to start keeping beers, my farming friend wouldn't have told me that he had two rotten hives in the wood. And Dorian, <coughs> my mentor at the time, wouldn't have come up to see me. And there's a saying, you can never join the dots looking forward in life. You can only join them looking back. And that's exactly what happened there. It was as if it was meant to be that I was supposed to start winning Griff because the universe came together to bring, bring me bees then. So I'll just read this quick. Just some interesting facts about uh, bees. So one third of the food we eat wouldn't be here if it weren't for honeybees. And that's due to pollination. The honeybee can fly up to six miles at a time. So the foraging circle, what we call a foraging circle, is three, a three mile circle from the hive. So they'll easily fly three mile away, three mile back, and they'll do that all day long, no problem. It's estimated that it takes 10 million foraging trips to make one jar of honey. And that's visiting two million flowers. When you see a jar of honey, it's more than just a jar of honey. When you think of the distance the honeybees have gone through to make that jar, to bring that jar to the market, it's absolutely incredible. <clears throat> and when you think of one honeybee, that's all the honey that one honeybee will create is one tenth of a teaspoon. Which you think, well, Griff, how on earth do you get lots of honey then? Well, in every hive, there's 70,000 bees. The queen lays 2,000 eggs a day. So they've got quite a good turnover of stuff and uh, you get the honey in like that. And just the last point there, you know what the honeycomb shape looks like? Even to date, that's the strongest material in existence with the least amount of material used. Now, people like NASA, uh, aerospace engineers, they will build stuff with that shape because they want something to be strong and light. But when you think how old the honeybees are, they invented that before scientists did, which is quite amazing, really. So why should you keep bees? So I'm guessing some, most of you are from an agriculture type background. So number one, you want to produce your own honey, even if that's just for your own consumption. Most of the honey that's on the market, the supermarket, the EU, non-EU blended stuff, I wouldn't even call that honey. So when you look at honey as a food source, it's more than just a food. It's as a class as a medicinal source as well. So there's a lot of health benefits when it comes to eating good honey. It could be an extra income source for the farm. For example, if you're growing oilseed rape, you're in the apple business, you've got lots of orchards, you want to increase your crop, you put bees on your crop and you get more crop. You have companies like Bulmers where they pay bee farmers to go to their sites to pollinate the apples because in some cases they will get up to 40% more crop by putting the bees on the apples. Now you work that out logistically and in costs. If Bulmers had to plant 40% more land to get the same kind of crop in apples, it put themselves out of business much, much more efficient to use the bees. They've been doing that since the beginning of time and they're very, very efficient in doing it. Has anybody got a B&B or holiday let type business on the farm? That could be another great thing. If you go on Airbnb, people want to experience days. People if you look at the news, honeybees is in the, business, in the news all the time. People are very, very interested in honeybees. Now, bees are quite sexy at the minute. They're, they're everywhere you look. So if you've got some kind of facility at the farm where to the tourism or the public comes to, you can offer beekeeping training or not even training, just offer meet the bees type days where you just kit someone in a bee suit, spend an hour with them going through the bees, teaching them how the bees work. People absolutely love that especially people from the cities, they will pay to experience that kind of activity. And last but not least, bees are always in decline. You've seen that in the news and it's true. They've lost a lot of habitat. The varora mites have come in. That's given the bees another hard time on top of everything else. And unfortunately, the majority of wild honeybees, they're not going to be able to live in the wild. So the majority of bees you see out and about are probably from beekeepers because we've got to treat those bees for varora every year. It's a bit like worming sheep or cattle. If you didn't worm your sheep and cattle, they'll eventually die. 
it's the same when it comes to honeybees. So is there a market for honey, specifically UK or Welsh honey? When we look at the UK market, we can only produce 14% of the honey consumed in the UK. So that means 86% of that honey is imported. Now the majority of that honey that's imported is low quality honey. That's going to be your EU slash blended non-EU honey. So this compares to our uh, European average of 60%. So Europe produces a lot more honey than us in the UK. And there is definitely a gap in the market there. And the challenge we've got as an industry is we haven't got enough bee farmers, not enough people producing honey, especially in the volume that we would need to bring the honey into the supermarkets and into mass market. You've got the likes of big supermarkets, they want their supply chain full, they want a full pipeline, they want a solid supply. Ma the majority of that comes in from the EU. <clears throat> but like, like I've seen in my business and the, the reason my company is grown, people want a quality product. In the UK and Wales, you produce fantastic quality beef, fantastic quality lamb. People are willing to pay a little bit more for that. They're definitely willing to pay a little bit more for quality honey, especially honey that's not been doctored, not been pa uh, pasteurized as direct from the hive. And when we look at the Welsh market, there's a strong Welsh demand for Welsh honey. And if we take the 14% of what we consume in the UK down to what we consume on the Welsh market, we estimate that to be between 1% and 4%. So it's all the Welsh honey you've got in the UK market is between 1% and 4%. So there's definitely a massive opportunity there for someone to come along and produce Welsh honey on, uh, on the, the scale that I'm on or potentially even bigger. So roots in the bee farming, historically it's been passed down daughter son type hobby, they've taken on operation and that's the, the easiest way to go into farming and bee farming. Obviously that's not how I started, I started from the bottom and I've worked my way up so it does show that it is possible to do. Bee Farmers Association, I remember, uh, it's an organization that I'm a part of, they've got an apprenticeship scheme. So does some larger bee farms. It's a great way to get your experience, start off with them, and then go off and do your own thing on the side. Those already farming, a lot of those skills can be transferred into bee farming. It's not that much different. You're looking after an animal, you're producing the crop, then you sell it. It's just the way you manage the livestock is a little bit different. I could go into another two-hour speech talking about how to keep bees, but I want to try and keep this uh, quite tight and uh, specifically on routes into market. So unlike farming, there's a lot less red tape when it came, comes to keeping bees. So you've got no animal movement, there's no farm assurance schemes, there's no TB tests, and you don't have to your taggy bees. It's a good when there's 70,000 bees in a hive. That's, uh, it's not a business you want to go into if you've got to start your tag in. So the ministry have got the department called Animal Plant and Health. They've got a bee unit and their remit then is animal disease. So there are some diseases which are notifiable. Um, they only interfere on those kinds of serious cases. Other than that, they'll, they'll just leave you be. But I would recommend, if you do start keeping bees, you register on Bee Base. That's the government website, just to notify them where your bees are. So if there is a serious disease outbreak somewhere, that they can narrow that down, find the disease source, and stop it. Unfortunately, this year, we had some disease off someone uh, quite close to us. And luckily, the ministry stepped in, found it, and uh, dealt with it. And unlike farming, there's no single farm payments. You don't have to fund this yourself. The government is, is not going to pay a subsidy for you to start keeping bees. I think they should, but uh, th there we go. And unlike farming, most of the work is done by hand. So for those farmers who love being on the tractor, uh, that's not really transferable. You can drive the tractor to the bees, but you can't work the bees from the tractor. How much will it cost? So this, this is the, the nitty gritty. So a flat pack hive with the frames and foundation, what I, what I call foundation is 
um, the starter wax then, which you put in the hive and the bees draw out. That's going to cost under 60 quid. It's going to be an hour and a half to build that hive. You can buy them assembled. A lot of my hives are polystyrene. It's a great way to keep bees in polystyrene hives. You will get more honey from a polystyrene hive because the bees can keep the hive warmer. The way they works is you've got bees in a hive. They've got different jobs. The least amount of bees keeping that honey at the optimum temperature, the more bees are out foraging. So your polystyrene hives, they come already built. They can come painted and you can just put them straight to use. It saves massively on paint and labor. Bees, your bees are gonna cost roughly 180 quid if you're buying a nuke. Tools are gonna be roughly 100 quid. Bee suit, another 150 quid. Now extracting kit, this is, you can buy a lot, lot cheaper kit, a lot, lot more expensive kit. That's roughly middle of the range. Your extractor's gonna be about 1,000 pound. Settling tanks will be 500 pound. It's a bit like farming. When you're building a shed, you're putting in a new system. You can spend 10,000, you can spend 100,000. Um, if you spend 5,000 pound on extracting kit, you know, you, you've got a good setup there. Food grade room, that's probably gonna be your biggest cost. I put in 10,000 pound, that's roughly what my honey house cost. Um, all that food grade, plastic, wipeable material, resin floor, all that stuff's very expensive. And you gotta get that signed off. Um, by your local authority. Insurance, not, that's not so bad. Four by four trailer, I assume in. most of you got that already, so you don't, have to, you don't have to buy that. And it's just like farming. I just mentioned that, that, that you could spend anything you want. I know a good bee farmer friend of mine, he's just invested now 70,000 in a new facility, so that's the building and the kit. And uh, that, that's very, very high tech. Legalities are selling honey. So honey has to be at least 18% moisture content. The, re the, the way they get that to 18%, the bees do it for you. Once that honey hits 18%, the bees will seal the honey with wax. So when you go in the hive, you pull your frame out. When you see that honeycomb sealed off, that's hit 18%, that's safe to extract. And way to add value to your honey, so I know, does anybody live near Heather Moors, quite high, there's a bit of Heather, that's the premium crop, that there is the creme de la creme. So when we're talking Welsh honey, that's quite a premium. Heather honey, especially Welsh, he he Welsh Heather honey, that's probably the most rarest honey in the UK, that does, uh, that's got a strong price point. But when you do state something that I'd say Heather honey, at least 75% of that has to be of that crop, otherwise it's uh, fake advertising. If you're selling honey through a third party, you need a food hygiene certificate, so that's the council coming out, signing your food hygiene room off. That's really easy, don't let that put you off. It's quite hard to get five star food hygiene if you're in the burger business or you're selling food that people are gonna consume. Honey is a really low risk food source, so a lot of those rules don't apply to producing honey. Honey labels, there's a couple of rules around that. You've got to have the weight, address, name, what's in it, etc. But that's really easy. All that information is on the internet. Or your local authority can just tell you what it is. Or the easiest thing to do, just buy a pot of honey, my honey, and just copy what I've got on the label. I've done all the work for you. So uh, this hasn't come through, right? But how much does, does a single hive produce? So everybody wants to know this. So on an average year, between 20 and 50 pounds, that's, that's not sterling, that's pounds in weight per hive. On a good year, this year, last year, they've been fantastic years. Your hives will produce in excess of 70 pounds per hive. Some hives will produce more so, 100 plus pound per hive. If you've got access to a good spring crop, so say you're close to oilseed rape in the spring, you'll probably pull 50 pounds off the oilseed rape and you'll get your main summer crop on top. So some hives, depending on your locality and you're willing to move your bees to the oilseed rape then back to your own premises, you might be able to make about 150 pounds per hive. But that's dependent on location. You move your hives again to the heather and it's a good year again, you might get another 30, 40 pounds again per hive. I don't migrate to the beekeep, I sell a specific type of honey but if you want to be serious in the bee farming and you want a different range, then that could be a great option again. And unfortunately, when we look at a poor year, the
the crop can be zero. So it's not like silage when the grass is growing and it's raining. You just throw, uh, wait till next week and then you cut it. The flowers, they're only in flower for a few weeks. If it rains for those few weeks, doesn't matter what the weather does after you've lost your crop. So honey prices. So when you look at bulk prices, say you want to sell into someone like Hilltop, Rose, Gales, the big packages, that's roughly going to be your bulk price. That's going to be the price either per tonne or they go by the per pound. Ideally, you need at least a tonne to sell into those companies for them to be interested in buying your honey. So the bulk price is going to be between 2 and £3.50 per pound. I'm sorry all this is in pounds. Beekeepers, they still go by pounds, not kilo. So it does mess everything up. Wholesale then, so if it's selling into someone like Suma, Castle Howell, that type of company, they're going to sell into trade. They're going to buy, be buying that jar in for between three and four pound. Trade price then, so say you're selling direct into a retail outlet where they sell direct onto the trade, you're probably going to get between four and five pound per pound. Retail, so this is what the shops are going to get right at the end. They're going to get between six and ten pound. But another great way is if you're selling online like me, Amazon, eBay, or you're selling from the farm gate, then you can command those prices, six, ten pound per jar, honey. So I'd only recommend going down this road. We're only ex um, looking into that road now where we've built the crop up to a certain standard where we want to spread our wings and hit different markets. And unfortunately, you see with milk and everything, that's how the food market works. You've got your bike, you've got your wholesale trade, and then retail. Everybody there has to make a cut. This is how the food system works. Looking at that, is that a profitable enterprise? I think it is. And there's definitely, like I've said before, there's definitely a big market there for honey. Because if you look at honey, and look at Welsh or UK honey, every single jar produced in the UK will get sold. It's, it's got a market. It's, people want to buy it. It's not like you overproduce milk, you've over, the, the capacity is too high, you've got to export. There's, there's no need to do that with honey. Other ways of making money in bee farming. So, you start keeping bees, you're dab handing it, and you're really good at breeding. No reason for farmers not to be good at breeding bees. You can start selling bees. A hive of bees, a small hive, 180 quid. Sell 20, 30 of them, it's not a bad little cider now. And you can even start selling queens. So a single queen might cost 40 quid. And if you uh, get into that, that could be quite lucrative. But breeding queens is a lot harder than just breeding bees. It's, it's, that's very, very specialist. We're lucky when you start sell, selling honey and you keep bees, you get a beeswax product. That's a byproduct from your operation, but that there is still 10 pound a kilo retail. So there's still masses uh, amount of market, not masses amount of money, but there is a big market for beeswax. Everybody seen food wraps, beeswax food wraps, all this single use plastic stuff, nobody wants the plastic. People are creating a cling film, a reusable cling film from beeswax. So there's a big market to sell into those kinds of companies. Pollination of crops, I mentioned bulmas, they will pay you to come and pollinate their apples. <clears throat> Could be another income there. Training. This is something we're going to offer next year. It's a, a branch we're going to branch into. We're going to start training beekeepers. Beekeeping, bee farming, it's not something that easy just to jump into. It's much easier if you've got someone, even if it's just for a day, to show you the ropes and you go back home and have a go and learn yourself. Contracting is a big, big aspect of farming. You go help your neighbor on the tractor, hay time. It's no different with bee farming. You go work for other big bee farmers who are stuck different times in the year, you can earn income from that. You can even buy honey from other people, resell add-ons, you could be a mini packager, just make sure if you're buying honey in England, you can't sell that as Welsh and vice versa, you've got to be crystal clear. If you're, if you're buying Welsh honey and you can sell it as Welsh, but don't say that's your own crop, you just, you've got to declare that, but there's a, there's a bucket there. We might be looking at that in a few years time, when there's only so much honey one man can produce and we want to grow our business, we might be looking into buying honey from Welsh beekeepers. So there's opportunities in itself when you go into beekeeping, but there's bigger beekeepers around you that you think is competition, but they're not your competition. They might be buying your honey off you in the bulk price and you don't have to buy a single jar. At the end of the day, you just get a big check 
and you go in the winter, go on a holiday, and the other guy does all the work. And another aspect in the bee farming is the same as farming. You can sell bee feed, bee equipment. So we sell a little bit of bee feed. That's one of the business models we've gone down. And that's a great little uh, income for the honey business. So what do you need to get started? You obviously need a hive. I won't go through what every aspect of that hive is. I just want to try, try and keep this talk down. I can talk all day, so I've got to try and keep it down. So you need your, you need your beehive. You need your feeders, supers, boxes, etc. You need storage, ideally dry storage, but you don't have to get dry storage. Obviously, your jars, etc., has got to be in clean, dry storage. Your empty beehives, they can be outside to stop the rats and the mice going in them. They'll be fine for next year. That's no problem at all. You need a dedicated uh, kitchen or honey house. I didn't mention last time, when you're small scale, a kitchen is fine. The, uh, the council will come around, as long as the kitchen is clean, they will sign that off as five star food, food hygiene, so you can start selling straight away. There's no need to commit 10 grand straight into a big honey house. It's a great way of starting a business, testing the market. If you don't like it, you haven't invested heavily, you can sell the kit, get the majority of your money back, no problem. You need your bees, where do you get your bees from? So there's a couple of places you get your bees from. There are Sales, bee sales, like livestock sales. There's about four or five a year. There's one in Pembrokeshire, there's one in Tyvee Side. They're quite good ones. The bee inspector then inspects those bees for disease. So you can buy with um, safety knowing that you're not gonna pick up disease. You can buy bees off other bee farmers. I don't sell bees, but other bee farmers, they do. Or the best way is the free ways you catch a swarm. So you put an empty hive like that out with the frames. You bait it up with a bit of lemon oil. Hopefully a swarm will fly into your hive for free. That does happen. We probably cast about between six and ten of them a year. So what does what does it mean to be a bee farmer? So roughly we keep around seventy hives. <coughs> Try and flick through this quite quick. That's seventy thousand bees per hive. So that's an operation roughly of four point nine million bees. Sounds a lot, but that's roughly a, a seventy hive operation. Few risks, it takes 1,400 stings to kill a person who is immune. So one sting might kill you, but only if you're allergic. But chances is you're not allergic. And I've always said, people are always scared of bees. They don't want to start keeping bees because they sting. I'd rather get stung by a bee than kicked by the cow. Because chances is you're going to survive a bee sting and you might not survive a cow kick. So risk-wise, cows kill a lot more people than bees do. So it's quite a safe industry to go into. There's an on season, there's an off season, so it's great. You're busy over the summer, but over the winter, you put the bees to bed, it's just selling the honey and you've got a bit of time off. Between April and September, that's the heavy months. If you love to go away for two or three weeks summer holiday, don't start keeping bees. But it's not that easy, here are the few problems. So the biggest problem you've got, down in waves, you get a lot of rain, everybody knows that. I just want to touch quick, I did, I did mention it briefly. The way the flower works, the flower comes in the flower, produces nectar. The honeybee goes to the flower, collects the nectar, converts that into honey. That's your honey crop. That flower might only be in flower for two weeks. If you get rain for that two week period, you've lost your crop. So that's a big factor. Another big factor, and this is where the most of the work comes in, bees love to swarm. So you've got to stop your bee swarming. So there are ways of doing that, which I won't go into today, uh, but that's where the majority of the summer work goes in. You just stop your bee swarming because you want your hive strong to produce the crop. And the other big thing is disease. Chances are you're not going to cast disease, not until you come to the roughly the scale that I'm on. It's just a percentage game. The more bees you have, the more likely you are that your bees are going to catch something up in the environment. If you've got 10, 20 hives in your own farm, chances are you're never going to see it. So the cost here, the majority of where you're going to spend your money, diesel, time, winter feed, varora treatments, you're going to lose roughly 10, 15% of your bee numbers in the summer when you do your swarm control. Rent, I pay a little bit of rent, the majority of that rent is paid in honey. Investment cost, new jeep, equipment, etc. You've got a bit of cost there, no different to farming. Maintenance costs, you got all, you're always buying jars, always buying labels, repairs to hive, replacing queens, etc. 
So it's quite a simple, straightforward operation, really. So the harvest. So you bring the honey in roughly around about now. I just finished last week bringing the honey. I won't go through that, how you get it in, but you bring the honey back to your farm and it's ready to extract. The extracting process is really easy. You take your frames out, your honey's going to look like that. So I'm cutting the wax off because the honey is, so I know that's at least 18% moisture content. You put it in the spinner. That spins around what's called a centrifugal force, throws the honey out. You filter that very, very finely, just to take the biggest bits of beeswax out. You want your pollen, etc., everything to go into the honey because that's what makes it good quality. And you can either jar that up straight away or you store it in buckets. Up to you if you want to sell in bulk, you sell in buckets. Or you can store in buckets and jar throughout the year as the sales come in. So the, the, the system is really, really easy. Routes to market, so farm gates probably are the main option when you're starting off between 10, 20, 30 neighbours. If you've got four, five, six hives, you know, they're just going to buy, buy all that honey off you, really. Farmers market, food festival shows, another great way to start selling honey, get your name out there, it's quite inexpensive. Bulk, I've mentioned that. Selling the shops, that's where you want to go then when you can afford to take a little bit of a cut. And that's where you start growing. Once you're in the shops, people are seeing your brand, seeing your product, your business is going to start growing then. Wholesaler, that's later on down the road. Once you start producing a couple of tonne, you want to start going down the wholesaler road, your own delivery cost becomes more than what the wholesaler will be. And another great way, e-commerce, you can sell direct, Amazon, eBay, your online shop if you've got a website, nothing there stopping you. We live in a time now where there's, there's never been an easier way or time to produce a product and bring it to market and sell it. The internet makes that possible. Just last week, we sent honey out to America and it was through, through the internet. You know, and um, very, very fortunate of that. So marketing the honey, I'll just fly over this really quick. Social media, that's probably going to be the best way to market the honey. That's free. You can obviously pay for ads, etc. Winning awards is another thing. Tur don't turn down TV, radio interviews. When people find out you keep bees, people want to come and talk to you. Never say no to anything. Say yes to absolutely everything. And always give something back. So we started doing talks for YFC, schools, etc. And that's paid us back big time then. So that's our product range. It's nice to have a little range. You don't want to sell just one jar. Three kilo buckets, 12 ounce jars, five ounce jars, and then the small one ounce jars. And that's for the B&B hotel type industry that we just launched this year. And this year we just launched selling the honey in the frame then. So companies like Hilton, they want that type of frame on the breakfast bar where the guests come in and they scoop up a bit of honey on the toast and that's as raw and natural as it comes. But that's open to anybody who wants to start keeping bees. Another branch we've branched into, we've branched into the adopt a hive scheme. So companies can adopt a the hive. They get a lot of marketing benefits. They get a lot of honey back. Mentor a business, the company behind this event of adopted a hive with me. Um, that's another great uh, diversification from a diversification opportunity. So beekeeping is a diversif diversification opportunity. This is a diversification of beekeeping. So what's next for Gwyn and Griff? We're going to bring up the bees numbers roughly to 100 hives, continue to grow the market, go into new markets, hopefully do a bit more exporting, and just continue to grow the brand and promote Welsh honey, and hopefully start buying Welsh honey later down the road from other Welsh bee farmers and beekeepers and bring that market onto the global stage. So next steps for you, if you want to learn more about beekeeping, you've learned a fair bit today, but you want to learn more when you've got more time. Free learning resource, Google and YouTube, that's the two biggest search engines. We've got a YouTube channel, we put a lot of content out there, teach people how to keep bees, talking through a variety, different variety of the jobs that you want to do different types of year. There's hours and hours of free content there, you can just learn through there, all that's for free. You can join a local beekeeping association, so every county's got a local beekeeping association. You have the Bee Farmers Association once you come to a certain size. Next year, we're going to start off a beekeeping training 
obviously it's not just me training all around Wales you've got people offering in-house training and uh, those training can be a bit better than your association type training because you go into a beef farmer and you're learning you know, you're going in in the deep bench straight away not just starting off with one hive you can go in someone like me go through 20 hives in the morning you're going to learn a lot really quick a lot of bee farmers now ventured into that get a mentor i mentioned i got a mentor right at the start that's a great way to get some experience company like like co-wine they've helped me out massively bringing my honey onto the market and further afield they're here today they're, they're going to do a bit of talking after me if you're thinking of growing any food business really make sure you do get in touch with co-wine they've got a little pot of money they can help you out with and they've got staff who are very very knowledgeable that can bring you a lot lot faster to market than you would yourself and all lasts for free in Carmarthen we've got a local Carmarthen uh, enterprise hub I think every county or area has got one of them that's all free as well there is a video there but I won't play that now <laughs> The reason my honey tastes so good isn't just down to me. Yes, how I treat my bees and the location I put them in are highly important, but there's more to it. In Carmarthenshire, we get more rain than almost any other county, it's where the grass is so green. And it's because of that level of rain, the plants can create a high quality nectar that the bees can convert into honey. I'm a countryside ranger, farmer and beekeeper all in one. This gives me an enormous advantage when it comes to working with wildlife and producing wild natural food in an environmentally friendly way. I don't extract honey in the kitchen. I built this purpose-built room. It meets the food standards that the industry sets. It's heat and humidity controlled. I don't want the honey to absorb any moisture from the air so the customer eats it exactly like it is, straight out the frames. Nothing contaminates it. That's why the honey tastes so good. Go back to mentor business, Cowine. Cowine actually paid for that video to get done through Trinity College in Carmarthen. So that's the kind of help they can offer you. You put a video like that on social media, your honey is going to sell. So make sure if you're thinking of starting a business, especially your honey or a full type business, grab Cowine before you leave here today and get connected with them. <laughs> <laughs>